So, we have been discussing the friction. In the last lecture, we learned about the form of drag force in different regimes of Reynolds number. In this lecture, we are going to uh, apply those concepts to solve problems. So, consider a ball is dropped from rest at a height h, uh, so in a viscous liquid. Assume that, so this liquid could be some uh, something like air or uh, a fluid which can be air or some viscous liquid like glycerin or honey, which are typically used in what is called a Stokes law experiment for measuring the viscosity of liquid in a, a, a bit typical BTEC first year lab physics experiment, the undergraduate uh, uh, physics experiment. So, assume that the drag force due to the fluid takes the form F t is minus alpha v. So, alpha is a constant. So, it is linearly proportional to v and this minus indicates that the direction is opposite to the direction of the velocity. So, in last lecture, we find out, uh, now we know under what condition we expect the drag force to take this particular form. So, the question is find the velocity and height as a function of time. So, here is uh, the solution of how to do it. So, first let us say we take our coordinate system and let us say we, so we start at some origin and let us say the vertical direction is y axis and this is a uh, one dimensional problem. So, we write down the Newton's law for this problem. So, what are the forces acting on the ball? So, let us say this is mass m. So, then the force that is acting is that it is weight mg downwards and then we have this uh, drag force. Now, the sign, so we are going to use minus here, but the sign can be positive or negative depending on the sign of the velocity. So, V represents the velocity and then this must be equal to, so this is the total force and now this is an example where the system is no longer at rest, it is moving, it has some acceleration and the acceleration must be mass times y double dot. And it is given that the initial condition is given at t equal to 0, the coordinate of the position of the ball was y at h and it is dropped from rest, dropped from rest. So, the y dot that is the velocity at 0, so this is the velocity at 0 is 0. Now, this equation is easy to solve and in fact, this is a differential equation that all of you know how to solve. So, for example, you can write this y double dot as the first derivative of velocity and express everything in terms of velocity and then you have a separation of variable and then you can integrate and the left, left hand side. Uh, so, let us say you are integrating from, uh, so you can separate the velocity and time and you are integrating from time from t equal to 0 to some time t and on the right hand side at t equal to 0 the velocity was 0 at some time, some time t later the velocity is v. So, if you integrate you get a log function and then if you rearrange the term you can solve for the velocity as a function of time and it turns out to have this particular expression and it is in the negative direction which means that the ball is going down because in our way we have taken the coordinate system the upward direction is positive. And then once you know the velocity as a function of time, so this velocity is dy dt. So, now again you can uh, integrate once more to compute the position as a function of time and it is also easy and standard uh, integration. So, that is an integration of exponential and if you now plug in the condition that your t equal to 0 y was h, then the final answer becomes this. Now, this one is somewhat different from, so this answer is different as compared to what you normally expect from just a motion, if you drop a ball and it falls with a constant acceleration, if the answer is somewhat different, it now has this ex, uh, a new term. So, when you do this calculation, after you get some answer and suppose the answer is not given, then you have to ask yourself this question always 
does it make sense does the answer make sense so of course uh, you can go and check the answer but if the answer is not there so then what to do so here is a simple checkpoint that works with this problem that suppose you ignore the drag force so then you know what is the ideal result in that you have all of you done in high school so ignore the drag force what does it mean when can you ignore the drag force you can look at this equation of motion so there are two forces one force is a constant and the other force is proportional to velocity so ignore the drag force means ignore the drag force compared to the uh, weight of the ball now this is possible when the velocity is small when is the velocity small at the initial time or close to the initial time because the ball is starting from rest so when the time was small then velocity was small and during that period perhaps you can ignore the drag force now how much time is small so note that the answer has a diamond uh, this combination alpha times t and this is sitting as a power of exponential which means this alpha times t must be dimensionless this you can check from here from the dimension analysis here so m times alpha times v has a dimension or uh, must be must have a dimension of uh, uh, force so this the dimension of mv is dimension of alpha times mass times the dimension of velocity which must be of dimension of force and hence we see that alpha must have a dimension of inverse t that means alpha times t is dimensionless then you can expand this uh, small time means that time p is small such that this product alpha t is very very smaller than 1 so that is a measure of small time. So then you can expand this exponential in a series and you can let us say the e to the power minus x is 1 minus x plus x square by 2 minus and so on so forth. So this you know this is the Taylor series expansion of e to the power minus x. So I plug it in here. So this e to the power minus alpha x is just this term and I chop this series at the higher and higher term has higher and higher order of alpha t and if alpha t is a number which is smaller than 1 then those numbers are smaller and smaller. So, I chop this series at the second term and then if I simplify I get this answer h minus half g t square which is your standard answer that you get in absence of any drag force then you have confidence in your answer. So, in presence of drag force you have the this is the uh, so the, your position is no longer given by this expression there is some additional term the more important part of the effect of drag force is that what happens in the limit of large time so again large means we can have this dimensionless parameter alpha t so you can say if alpha t is very bigger much bigger than 1 then the time is very large so in this case we can sort of ignore in the expression for v we can ignore this exponential dependence and then we get that our velocity approaches a constant minus g by so in this expression if i so this velocity is just first term is a constant and the second term is so if i drop this term it just becomes a constant which is a ratio of g over alpha and this is a constant. So, if what does it mean that the velocity is constant or it but note that this is not exactly constant because alpha t is exactly 0 when t is actually t approaches infinity. So, we say that this goes to constant asymptotically which means if I plot the time the velocity the magnitude of velocity as a function of time. So, it starts from 0 and then gradually increase but its acceleration goes down and hence it approaches this limiting case as time tending to infinity 
and this value is minus g by alpha. Now, this velocity has a name which is called the terminal velocity. So, it basically means that at, so what happens is that if you look at the Newton's law of motion, so there is a constant force and a force which is increasing with velocity, but the rate of increase is slowing down. So, as the difference between these two force and because V is turned out to be negative, so we know that this is a friction which is opposing the relative motion of the uh, ball through the fluid, which means this force is in the opposite direction opposite to the uh, gravity. So, then the overall force on the object is much less than the weight of the object itself and as the velocity increases, it gradually approaches a scenario where the two forces are almost equal or equal, equal to each other. So, they cancel each other. So, then that if the total force is 0, that means the you expect the ball to move with a constant velocity and this velocity has called the terminal velocity which has this particular expression and this is the reason why we survive after getting hit by a raindrop which is falling from a height of 1 kilometer because the, so this is a case where you see that the result of the motion is completely different in presence of drag force and in absence of drag force. And so in, so this is a scenario where in real life situation where you absolutely cannot ignore drag force when analyzing the motion of a projectile such as a raindrop. Now here I make one more comment okay, before going to the next problem. So this is the following. So remember that in earlier uh, we defined different types of mechanics problem and this particular example belongs to the second situation where we have the total force on the particle on the obsist our system is not 0 and all the forces are given the initial condition, initial location, position and velocity of the particles are given. So, the equation of motion is given, the initial this is called initial condition, initial condition is given and our goal is to determine the trajectory of the particle. So, this problem fits into that particular situation. So, this introduces this very important concept of terminal velocity. Now, we go through uh, very quickly uh, to another example which is sort of another example of friction and in this case uh, this is a solid we are going back to the dry friction or the friction between two solids and some of you may have already familiar with this example problem, but I find it a very nice problem which illustrates the practical application of friction. So, we all tie a rope around some pole when you are tying uh, or some heavy objects such as a boat. You must have all seen this. So, the question is that why do we tie it around a pole? So, this problem helps to analyze that. So, a rope wraps an angle theta. So, this is a rope and this is a pole or a, a cylinder, a column. So, something like this and we are wrapping this rope around this. The question is that what is the effect of this and pull at one end with uh, now you. So, this remember that when we discuss the uh, review the uh, nature of the tension force in a rope in a, a few weeks back, there we sort of gave an example that uh, the tension in a um, tension in a rope uh, which we normally assume to be uniform need not be the case always. So, this is a situation where the tension in the rope along uh, along the rope which is wrapped around this pole is not uniform because of an external force on the acting on the rope which is the friction between the pole and the rope. So, there is a coefficient of static friction between the rope and the pole is mu. Then what is the largest force rope can exert on the boat without the rope slipping? So, this is the problem. Now, I sort of show you the analysis here and I will quickly go through it. So, the important point here, so this analysis is pretty standard. So, I am not going to sort of go through it quickly and uh, is worked out here. 
So, but the point is that if you look at the rope as your system and then there are and one part of the rope slice of rope which makes an angle d theta let us say as your system, then there are three forces. So, the tension force from the surrounding part of the rope plus a contact force uh, a friction uh, uh, for the for the contact force of the rope and the pole which has two component one is the vertical component and other is the uh, component tangential component and because of this external contact force the frictional force t is non uniform so it depends on the angle theta the important point is that this tends so it depends on angle theta which is kind of intuitively obvious the more you the more length of the rope is contact with the force and more frictional force so you can exp intuitively expect expect that it is it will be more hard to pull at one end so the friction will try to prevent the rope from slipping and that is the whole point why we tie the rope around this pole to increase the length of the contact of the rope with the pole. But what is important is that this happens in an exponential way. So, this is the important part of result from this calculation that if we look at one slice and do the force balance, what we get is that um, the difference of the force. So, this uh, difference in the tension on the two sides which is the uh, frictional turns out to be exponential in theta. So, this is the crucial part and which is why this rope tying this wrapping this rope around the pole is very effective. So, now, I invite you to think a couple of question which I am not going to discuss, but it will be fun to think from your part is that why the ropes, the ropes that you tie for example, if I want to tie something some small objects and around if this is my pole then I have a small rope, but the ropes that are used to tie boats or launch steamers or ships around in the harbor in the port, they are very thick. Why are they so thick? What does the thickness does to the rope? Second thing is that we not only wrap the pole, the rope around the pole, we also tie some knot. What is the, what does the knot play a role? what is the role of a knot? And third question is what if the pole breaks? So, I invite you to think about these interesting questions and in the next week we are going to discuss uh, the uh, new topic, but before that let us summarize what we have discussed so far. So, we have looked at two kind of friction. So, we have reviewed in, in this week we have reviewed the uh, uh, the two kinds of friction and the basic Coulomb's law of friction between two solid surface. And we also ex, uh, uh, consider a case a friction a drag force between a solid and liquid and found its expression in different uh, uh, different regimes of uh, Reynolds number. And we took some example and most importantly we found that uh, this that when we consider the projectile motion, the drag force is some often very significant. And finally, through different examples, I try to convey the message that in real life there are many practical applications of friction. They are very common and they are very useful, sometimes useful, sometimes not, but they are very interesting to study. So, thank you. See you next week.